All right, welcome back for another episode of Raise Em Up, and welcome to the finale of season two, our last episode with our second book uh, that we've been working through, The Spiritually Vibrant Home, The Power of Messy Prayers, Loud Tables, and Open Doors. Uh, and as you kind of heard in our last episode, which we can confess— was actually four weeks ago. We planned on it to be two weeks ago. We had left with some challenges. And so we'll get to review some challenges, but we'll also get to just reflect on our journey with this book, uh, which again, I, I was kind of saying a little bit before we record it, third time through this book, but I just, I love it. I think yeah. as I kind of started the season, I kind of said like, this will always be, you'll always have the Bible on the top shelf and then underneath it, this shelf of books that will be important for me mm. throughout my ministry. And this book just continues to be there because I just love... I love so many things about it, and I could go on forever, but I would like to, where, where should we start? Do you want to start with the challenges, or do we want to tease it? Do we want to look into where this conclusion, the three-page conclusion, uh, came in? Yeah, well, let's talk conclusion first. Let's, let's talk conclusion. So the final the final three pages, right? Uh, I kind of said, like, even how he ends it is so poetic, right? Because because he frames, he, everything he does, he does so creatively, which yes. I appreciate, and also kind of lays it out, like, somewhat strategically. So the, the frame of the book is simply this Bible study that Don had with his church. And so you start with the messiness, the vulnerability. Can we really be this honest about our households? And mm -hmm. we end with where did that class go? So what stood out to you as you kind of read these final reflection pages of Don? Where do we jump in? I agree with you that he, the way he wraps it up is beautiful. Like it, it br brought it full circle to me. And I, this is my first time reading the book. so I'll probably read it again. But um, I did think that it, it, it brought forth that honesty, that element mm -hmm. of honesty and um, vulnerability. And I don't, I maybe confessions, just like um, getting real with stuff. I think that kind of circled back for me that that stuff is important and that how we do it is what's laid out in this book with the open doors and the messy tables, mm -hmm. loud tables. And I loved the epiphanies, right? So when you found like the the person that realized they were in an extended household and they mm -hmm. said, this is great. I thought I didn't have a purpose. Mm -hmm. I do, right? And certainly when we think about like the reason why we're doing this podcast is, is for anybody who wants to raise up kids in the faith or young yeah. people in the faith. Mm -hmm. And so recognizing we all have a role because I do think there's this temptation for folks either that never have kids of their own or had the kids of their own leave the house and they're empty nesters and they grow up and they get older mm -hmm. and kids move away and things like that, you start to lose a sense of purpose or what am I doing? Yeah. Because my whole life was built into raising up these kids. And I think that's where there's, there's a level of my word for it. this book is hope that gets delivered in this book, that we all always are involved in the raising up of kids. Man, we should name a podcast about yeah, that this, sounds right? Great. That's raising up the next generation. I love that, right? I love that picture that we have. And so you have the, I love that, the, 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 the realness, the honesty, the vulnerability, the authenticity of it, of like, there were tears, there, were, there, was, there was tears cried. I mean, maybe there's people listening right now that were like, I cried when y'all were talking. <laughs> I hope not. I hope there were good tears if that happened. But, but again, that word hope, I mean, just even looking at some of these things for, uh, for everyone in our learning lab, it was quite a journey. We experienced paradigm shifts, who exactly is in my whole household? Self-awareness, which of these three household habits is my household weakest in? Mm -hmm. Scriptural insights, does God actually care about my household um, praise together? And lots of practical steps, which is easily yep. my favorite part of the book. Yep. Uh, for this week's homework assignment, strike mm -hmm. one deeper conversation in your home. But but like I said, I kind of appreciate kind of um, where he ends. He reflects on it. He says, no, I'll never forget that class. That class gave me Hope. And I think this book gives me hope. It's not just the extraordinary nature of what God did among us that gives me such hope. It's the everyday mundane context he did it within. Mm -hmm. It's the imperfect tools like me that he used to help us grow. That, I think, is part of what's making me so hopeful about homes these days. Not just my home, though I'm more hopeful about my own home than ever, but homes everywhere, even your home. Mm -hmm. I'm hopeful that God can help you grow a, a more spiritually vibrant home. I hope our prayers become a little messier, our tables a little louder, and our doors a little more open. I hope we all experience the spiritual vibrancy God has for us 
and our homes. Mm. I thought that was just a really, and he keeps going to close it out with a few more sentences, but I thought it was just a, such a cool picture of what this journey has been for us to ingest our conversations. Yeah, and I think that's why, so it's my second time to read this book, and, and I think that's what makes this book accessible for all of us, mm -hmm. or for me, maybe I shouldn't say for all of us, but for me, is that it acknowledges that it's okay to not have a perfect home yeah. in every area, right? But to be continually improving things, but that as we're trying to bring that spiritual vibrancy into our homes, it's okay for it not to look all pretty and neat and all put together. Yeah. And, you know, that Sunday morning, everybody looks so pretty when they come into church. It doesn't look like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And that it's okay for it not to look like that. And to be real and honest about that with others that, yeah, my house is. Yeah you know, not perfect. And we are not always spiritually vibrant, but we are trying, you yep. know, with God's help. <laughs> yeah. We are working towards those things and it's going to be messy and it's not going to be pretty, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. I think that's I, one of the things I like most about this book in general is that it acknowledges that. Yeah. I think that also just the journey of your own spiritual growth, you mm -hmm. know, like it's hard. This book made it very easy to see that it yes it's a collective journey for your family or your the people that you have influence over but it's also a very personal journey to get to the place where you understand your role in those larger mm. areas like your family mm -hmm. um and i think you know that it, it's kind of a overused sometimes about taking a village but it there is a certain village aspect to this book, right? Absolutely. It's, you're not in isolation. It's not just mom right. or dad yeah. or mom and dad trying to raise up kids in the faith. It's a it's a larger community and a larger influence sphere that really makes the difference and how we how we surround ourselves with people, but also how we teach our children to surround themselves with people. Absolutely. Is yeah. something that maybe was an undercurrent in the book that that at least hit for me, you know. I love oh, that yeah. because I think back on the Sticky Faith journey, and we saw the same thing play out mm -hmm. uh, in season one of <laughs> the first book that we read through was that important of a sticky web of relationships that you build. And I think, isn't that like, I, I start, I look around at our world so much. I look around at our people and I start asking kind of what what are the really the issues we're facing and things like that. And I think there's this level, this this lie that we get told that we somehow have to carry the world on our shoulders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That we have yeah. to do it ourselves, that we have to be perfect. Uh, and that, that goes for our parents, right? Yeah. Thinking we have to figure it out. We have to learn it and things like that. But there's this humility that God invites us to have mm -hmm. to say, I actually am not perfect. I mean, especially <laughs> as Christians, right. you think we could say <laughs> so that crazy to think Ooh, how hard that yeah. is. i don't how have hard it figured out right, yeah. exactly so true but i think i think that's the cool thing and it was, so it's funny when i piloted this podcast to some of my past pastor friends right pastor buddies from seminary that was one of the immediate i, I sent it to three of them they all said the immediate feedback they appreciated was we weren't afraid to talk about how we didn't have it together <laughs> oh, yeah Right, our yeah. vulnerability and, and being able to give people permission to not be perfect, yeah. and for us to be able to share our own experiences of where we've needed other people in our lives outside of our immediate core household and things yeah. like that. Yeah, this week I was chatting with a friend who I've tried to kind of weave into our web um, to go back to sticky faith, but um, and I was just lamenting a struggle with my kids that you know, well, we're trying this tactic with our son and we're, we really want to make sure we, we honor and, and care for him. And, but then when we're practicing this, then it negatively affects our, you know, his sister and, and, and then, you know, neither of them are happy or one of them all is always going to be disappointed. And I'm sitting there trying to find the answer, which is what I think Don was doing at the beginning of the book. He said, going into this Bible study was tricky because he's used to having questions and answers. Right. And in parenting, it just doesn't look that way. And this wonderful woman just looked at me and she said, yep, that's the journey. It's just going to happen that way. Not everybody's problems are going to be able to be fixed and you're just going to have to muddle through. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> you know, yeah. thank okay. you for that. Okay. Because, and part of me was mad, you know, a little bit like, oh, but I thought somebody out there has to have the answer that's going to click for my whole family and there's going to be a tactic that's going to work and it's going to make every no because we're in a broken world yeah. mm -hmm. this reminds me a little bit of um 
just the philos I cannot remember the philosopher that said this, but you know, science explains the world um, in this in this way that leaves a, a vacuum, like a hole in the mm. middle that that is God filled. Mm. And and that's it, it, that's one of the things that always stuck with me out of those early philosophers is that they understood that there wasn't one answer to the world or how the world worked. Right. And I think that is how I've I've come to understand and view that parenting as yeah. well is that there's always this vacancy there where there isn't an answer, and that's where we see God the most in yep. those in in mm-hmm. that that hole where nothing else really explains it. Right. Like. Right. There's not an answer. There's not a, a black and white. There's not a list of to do's or, um, you know, an instructional manual. And we all know parenting just doesn't happen that way. Yeah. But if we think about that, all of those explanations are in a circle. And in the middle of that is this place where we fill it with God. God fills mm-hmm. it for us. Mm-hmm. We just have to be open to that. Well, as I hear these different things, it's funny, even since I was a kid, I've been very fascinated by the complexity of existence right so to get really deep <laughs> it's a little right? early in the morning here all right this, i say uh, we've all had coffee body. but the complexity <laughs> of our world right and so let's just go with um just just in general life right as you mm-hmm. kind of said there's all sorts of things moving all sorts of experiences when people come together they bring a lifetime of experiences together mm-hmm. but even look at creation like creation is so fascinating when you get down to what the science tells us and things like that but then there's also this balance of simplicity right mm-hmm. of of and, yeah people are going like what a nerd stop talking no uh like i'm thinking of our listeners they're like i need my coffee now we're gonna have to pause the podcast let me get some coffee we're not going into string theory i promise there's a <laughs> there's, I don't even there's, know a what sim- that is. there's a simplicity Simplicity side of things too of what and what I'm getting at is this when we talk about this and this yeah. need for the right answer this mm-hmm. need for things to be at peace and balance and this this hole that we need filled like I go back to a word I, I and those that know me especially as I have any spiritual conversations with people especially about past experiences that some might call counseling spiritual counseling <laughs> I call spiritual conversations to get people comfortable with I always want to get to the heart of the matter mm. right there's typically the issue is never the issue. And so even with this, at the heart of it is this desire, this deep desire in every single one of us to have control, right? It's that yeah. simple, right? In a sense that there's control, but then there's this, I mean, and we've talked about it with Sticky Faith. We've talked about it in this book. There's this other reality that ultimately we're not in control. Mm-hmm. That's that's the hole that's missing uh, that, that we're filling it in. And so there's that cool piece of being able to release that and recognize we're not in control, recognize life is messy and complicated and complex, uh, and that it is a journey. And there's something beautiful in that sense, too, of being able to to yeah. fail <laughs> like, well, t- and learn. It, once you release that control or, or stop chasing that control, yeah. you can start chasing your creator. And he's already there. Like, he's he's waiting to... to hold you and and to show you his promises and how look at all these other people in scripture who had zero control but I watched out for them and even when everything seemed to mess for the disciples what was happening you know when Jesus rose from the dead the disciples thought everything was out of control and everything was an absolute mess and God proves time and time and time again he's not surprised by our circumstances he's not surprised by our failures he's not daunted by the deficiencies that we see in ourselves our kids like mm-hmm. he's he's not afraid of any of that um yeah but i am i am tempted to control my kids and control my environment and control everything um and when i can't you know when inevitably it all falls apart i have two choices i can either fall apart with it or i can say oh whoops i got tangled up in wanting control and i can release that to god and allow him to be in control and then demonstrate that to my kids mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah and i think as parents it's so hard right because we want to try to do everything perfect yes mm-hmm. yeah cuz i want to create this environment where my kids are going to know jesus love jesus grow up to be these perfect adults who right. are doing right and i want to control everything to make it that way and i can't yeah. I mean, I have two I have two daughters who grew up in the same house that are very different. Yeah. They're both amazing people. And I got reminded the other day at um the pet store. <laughs> my youngest had the dog at the pet store because she loves her dog and they're walking around. And I had to go to another store. And so when I came back, mm-hmm. 
she had been talking to this family, and a lady was like, "Is that your daughter?" And I was like, "Yes." And she was like, "She is wonderful." Oh, that's she, awesome. She was able to talk to us and just share things with us, yeah. and I was like, "Oh." Thank you. That's but huge. you know, we, we're focusing in on one part of something, right? Mm-hmm. And we don't always see right. that big picture. God does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we don't. And so we focus so much on trying to control the things that are right there that we see that when we give up control, when we allow God, or when you walk away to the other store, <laughs> like you yeah. let your child kind of, it, it's amazing to see that God is right there with them. Yeah hard to give up though yeah and it's hard to say okay i can't control yeah. this god she's yours mm. you know? i think control is always mm. um such an illusion mm-hmm. that just, yeah that's a great word it for it circle, yeah. if con- if your most control is at the top of that circle and you lose control as you go down <laughs> where you have the least amount of control is closest to where you're trying to grab the yeah. most control. sure right it's like to me, I always, it's, it's such a red flag for me anytime I feel myself or see someone else in my life really trying to grab a lot of control because I know really what that is, is that they feel that lack of control Very. right mm-hmm. on the other side. Yeah. Um, and, and it's so tempting when you feel that to overcorrect, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just nature. We <laughs> always try to overcorrect. And so when you see somebody that's just scheduled to a T or, or like, you know, has their whole life, you know, organized and planned out, there's no variability, there's no flexibility. To me, that always screams like they're feeling that right on their heels. Mm-hmm. They're feeling that chaos. Um, because the truth is somewhere in the middle is where we perform the best. Mm-hmm. So we have. We, we feel some control, but we also understand flexibility. I would push a little further, though, because I would say actually where we perform the best, according to Scripture, is when we're completely out, out of control. control. Yeah. yeah, Right? When we're We've completely honest. Because as you were talking, right. what I was realizing That's was— That's a little stretch for me. I'm just right? saying. <laughs> it's probably a lot of stretch for our, re- our listeners, too. Yeah. I mean, think about this. Like uh, that I started—as you were talking, I was realizing how conditioned we are to control everything. everything. Yeah. Yeah. So— Social media, mm-hmm. what people think of us, mm-hmm. what we tell people, how we dress ourselves. It's all about control mm-hmm. of what other people would think of us, which is hilarious because you can't control what other people think right. about you. Well, it's the perception right? thing. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the whole perception reality thing. And so I love that this book gives us that permission and God gives us permission to be vulnerable and honest. So not a family uh, show but I'll bring it up, right? So these are these are people raising kids in the faith. There's a show on Netflix called Black Mirror. And I oh, had- it's terrifying. It's terrifying. I had a couple of uh, high school seniors a couple oh, years ago recommend it to me. And there's one episode that's coming to mind. It was called Nosedive. And it's this uh, futuristic society where every interaction oh, yes. you have, you rate each other. So like just if yeah. I said, hey, do you on the street? I would rate you one to five. Like everybody, everybody has their own device and you get, you get preferences or based on how high your rating is with everybody. But it's this whole idea. I can control how How people people see me and how people understand me and how I have all my stuff together. And you can go to this restaurant if you're a five, you can go to these restaurants if you're three, you can stand in this line at the airport if you're a five, you can stand in this line if you're not. Right. It is. It's terrifying. (laughs) But it's, and and the reason why the show exists is it's a dark reflection of our current reality. So that's what social media is. Related to technology. Yeah. 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 And so, and so uh, I, I say that though too, because the episode kind of exposes is how it's a completely false narrative. Mm-hmm. Like you can't actually control anything no matter how hard you try. People are going to think what they're going to think. They're going to do what they want to do. Let's turn this to scripture though. So when it comes to control, mm-hmm. who's in control? Not me. <laughs> yeah, God. Not me. God is in control. And he says to us, my power is made, made perfect. perfect, perfected in weakness. Mm-hmm. Right? It's in our vulnerability, our, our ability to be honest that God's glory shines, that his truth reigns. And I think that's a beautiful picture for us too because another book that I'm reading right now with my small group is Emotionally Healthy Discipleship. And the chapter we just read is a cool perspective. Very important word, dare I say, central word for Christianity, faith, right? Uh, Belief, uh, trust. Like these words all start to get closer to what the pistuo, the faith means in the Greek. But uh, the, the, the author of this book, uh, Peter Scazzaro, uh, 
he he lets it kind of lay like this uh, to relax mm. in God, right? Ooh. That's what faith is. That sounds so good, doesn't right? it? Right? Wow. To relax, to relax in, God. in God. Just do you hear what he's saying? Yeah. To mm. to be able to have peace yeah. and contentment and knowing that no matter what happens with my family, with my job, with my life, with what people say about me, with what social media, with what's going on in the news, God is in control. Mm. I know this yeah. from my, when I look at scripture. And I think this totally applies to us here. For everybody that's joining us for this conversation of what it means to raise up kids in the faith, can we relax in God? Mm, that's I, huge. I know this week too, I like since last summer, I've been really laying heavy in first Corinthians, the book of first Corinthians, where Paul is kind of telling the the Corinthian church to do the same thing. Quit trying to get credit to all these preachers that are coming and talk to you. He's Paul saying, quit giving me credit. Quit, quit giving Apollos credit. Quit giving Peter or Cephas uh, mm -hmm. credit. He says, Paul watered, Apollos planted, or maybe it's rearranged. Right. God gave the fruit, right? God's the one working in all of it. And all we're asked to do is relax in God. Yeah. Relax in his word, share it, yeah. spread it, plant some seeds, I'm water them, over this. and then watch him, right? That's a lot. Yeah. I need yeah. the book so I can just look at that chapter. <laughs> Future <laughs> season, all right. It's great. No, yeah, and, it's, and I think the, it's central yeah. to um, leadership, right? Like Absolutely. Coming at oh, this from goodness. just from a real raw perspective of how hard it is to lead in this time and this mm -hmm. place that we find ourselves in, I think. Uh, post COVID and a changing world and um, being that like just that idea of of really being able to center yourself on that truth, mm -hmm. I think changes a lot for someone, right? Because think of how uh, I'll use the word bizarre relaxation is today. Yeah, relaxation in the middle. It's always funny. I mean. It's a very common sermon I've heard, peace versus chaos, right? Mm -hmm. And and the painting, I always hear the painting, right, of the, the king who uh, commissioned someone to make a painting of peace. And he had three options and like uh, like two of them were very what you think, idyllic, uh, peaceful sunsets, storm. forests, mm -hmm. lakes, water, all this stuff. And then the other one was a storm, right? And, and the king ended up choosing the one with the storm. And everybody thought it was very bizarre. But like in the storm, you saw like a mama bird with her babies, uh, like an, underneath a waterfall or something like that, like mm -hmm. a storm and a waterfall and raging noise. And, and the point is peace has a presence, mm -hmm. right? Peace is not the absence of chaos. It's a presence. I think when we mm -hmm. think about relaxing in God, trusting God, especially in this journey of leading our households and, and leading in our communities, there's a relaxation and peace that is so important for us to just trust God with every single day. And this is where I kind of want us to go is think about this book then. Yeah. How does this apply to the things? What What's really standing out to you? What are your biggest takeaways when we look at this book? And then we'll wrap up with our challenges too. So as you look at the power of messy prayers, loud tables, and open doors, the journey of the spiritually vibrant home, the the empowerment to be vulnerable and, and absolutely messy, what are your biggest takeaways from our journey together? As I think about messy prayers, um, which, you know, those spiritual conversations happening um, at our loud tables and, and you know, just those, those disciplines, spiritual disciplines, I think about situations in my home with my younger kids um, when something goes wrong and there's fighting. <laughs> oh, shocker, right? Um, which my dear friend's saying, you know, yeah, that's the journey. That's what it is. Um, I am humbled as I think about how I either I want to be able to control or I expect my child to be able to control and change and fix their brokenness. Um, and that is certainly not what God's word says. Uh, but but instead, like, how can I demonstrate that, like you shared, relaxing, that peace, that, um, hey, you messed up. And so, you know what? You're forgiven. God makes us new let's just let that go and let's move into something different. You know, God has also created us to be peacemakers. So let's walk together and see what could that look like in this situation. There's a very different perspective in uh, modeling it that way than saying, we have had this conversation 10 times. Oh, Why yeah. haven't you figured it out? You know, and, and for me, I have tried this, 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 and this. Why isn't it fixed? Well, <laughs> because you're powerless to fix the sinfulness in your own heart and in your children's heart. Yeah. Right. But the Holy Spirit empowers you 
by the de death and resurrection of Jesus to acknowledge that, to release it, to receive that forgiveness, and then to say, Lord, help me to make be peace better. with what I've got. Yeah. Not necessarily mm -hmm. even like be better and fix yeah. it, but just to oh, be grateful and relax in the fact that, nope, you can't do it. That's why I did, mm -hmm. right? You can't do it. That's why Jesus did. Thank goodness that Jesus did. Okay, now that we're forgiven, now that our identity is sealed and, and good to go in that sense, now how can we live that out and trust in Jesus in, in addressing what sin is doing right now in this mm -hmm. situation? Do you know where I go? I, I'm not a parent, right? But in, when I was a camp director, pastoral leadership, things like that, yeah. when it's like, I've tried this, I've tried this, oh, I've yeah. tried this. And so I find myself in prayers like, Lord, they're not listening. They're not doing what I say. Like, <laughs> yeah. what is going on? Like yeah. any time that I've ever <laughs> been there. And it's like, God goes, oh. Yeah. And he holds up a mirror <laughs> and says, tell me more about someone who doesn't listen to everything. Oh, I know. Right? Yeah. I, I, the words were coming out of my mouth and I'm like, you know, why, why do we have to keep having to have this conversation? And it struck me. I was like, <laughs> God is just laughing at me right. right now because how many, you know, Melanie, why haven't you figured this mm -hmm. out yet? Why right, haven't you figured right. this out yet? It's so fun. It's yeah. There's a, a, my, one of my one of my favorite I books. I find delight in that. Yeah, <laughs> one of my favorite books is *The Holy Wild* by Mark um, Buchanan and I or Buckman. Sorry. Anyway, um, and there's a there's a piece in there where he says he uh, he's he's describing a man named Gordon who has this has this prayer with God and he says, you know, do you know how I love you? Yeah, you love me mercifully. You know, you love me fully. You love me completely. And and God says, what well, what if what if it were not so? What if I loved the way you love? Oh, people? sure, yeah. And it was just like, oh, you know, Ow. punched to the gut, like, oh God, I'm so glad that you don't love me conditionally the way I love myself. I'm so glad you don't love me conditionally or temporarily or only when I'm good the way I, I show love to other people. And that was a beautiful moment to relax in that love was like, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you that you love me better than I could love you better than I can love myself, better than I can love my kids. Help me to point my kids to that love. So Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think too, when the, the, the power of the book comes in that there are so many practical ways mm -hmm. to walk through those times where we feel like, um, you know, we're helpless. We're, yeah. we have no, we do have no control and, um, and, but there's just little things that aren't momentum. It's mm -hmm. not like, Anything that would be like, wow, I can never do that. It's mm -hmm. something you could really go home and do, yeah. which kind of came into the challenges. Even though I told you I found them very difficult <laughs> in May. I wish we uh, had done it at a different time. But but even those challenges in and of themselves are something that you could go home and do today. Tangible. You could yep. make something happen today that moves you a little. When I said be better, like we know we're not ever going to be great, right. but we can move on that spectrum a little bit to where we're we're opening ourselves up to growth, um, which ultimately is that spiritual thing that we're we're seeking, right? Mm -hmm. if, because when we have it, it's easier for us to to shepherd our children mm -hmm. that we're raising, trying to raise up in the faith. You mm -hmm. know? And I think I'll piggyback because my greatest takeaway from the book is just how that that God is present in every thing, right? Even not it doesn't <laughs> have to be a biblical conversation it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be right obviously that will come right that that will come the deeper you get the more you set the table the more fire burning mm -hmm. uh the more rescue ship right approach that you get to life like the deeper you get into each of the metaphors but simply being and relating with each other mm -hmm. is the crucial piece of, of what i took away from this book so when we think about our our young people when we think about our kids when we think about our communities that we're involved in do we do we talk <laughs> you know what i mean do yeah. we spend time together do we play games together do we do things are we like the rest of the world isolating is everybody in their own rooms mm -hmm. are we on our phones are we watching our own movies are we quiet on our car rides are we all this stuff because it really is just a matter of god created us to relate and be relational and that's really what i would call the baby step of mm -hmm. a spiritually vibrant home are you right. actually living life together and doing things together yeah and i think that's the thing um like the loud tables right being able to just be together mm -hmm. and have conversations yeah 
and not going necessarily into that conversation with a, we have to get here. An objective. I've got to yeah. move from A to B. Oh, sure. Right? Or we've got to Those have this actually, specific right? Where you have an yeah. conversation. When you start. Right? Especially yeah. when you've got teenagers. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't want to hear, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. but just allowing those conversations to happen naturally. Yes. And that's something that I can say probably since we've been doing this book that I've mm -hmm. tried to be more intentional about to not necessarily try to push certain conversations because I think that's easy to do, but to allow them to happen naturally. And when they do happen naturally, then we have more deeper conversations and, and yeah. Things it's are like, heard differently, I think. It's like driving without really knowing where your destination is, right? It's like getting in the car and just saying, we're just going to spend the day. We'll see where we land, you know? Mm -hmm. That's hard, right? But with conversations, I often find that that even with my, my demographic of middle school kids, it, when you go into a conversation, knowing where you want to go with it, they sniff it out so fast oh, yeah. and they know your motive is to get mm -hmm. them somewhere. And then you have resistance right away. So if you can really clear that slate and sit down with kids, either your kids or kids that you're mm -hmm. in, in they're, they're in your care, I think um, that's when real authentic conversations happen. When you just say, tell me where you are. And then we'll we'll decide from there where we're going. Mm -hmm. We but, yeah. yeah we yeah. yes we. But but I don't want to I don't want to say where we're going to get to before mm -hmm. I know where you're at. You mm -hmm. know. Yeah. I think this is great. I mean, especially like even as you're talking, I am realizing in hindsight like the different journeys that God has kind of taken me on because like there's a level to which there's uh, the permission to pause the permission to wait, right? All biblical mm -hmm. things we're called to. Um, but also the, okay, like I'm giving you space, I'm letting you wait, but it doesn't mean I'm leaving you or I'm mm -hmm. stopping. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because like, I, I, like mm -hmm. this will like Netflix, right? So when, especially when there's nothing on Netflix, you start watching anything on Netflix. Mm -hmm. So I watched some of the girly shows uh, recently. So I did the Love is Blind. <laughs> girly show. I did, you did uh, Love is Blind. Married at First Sight. There's like <laughs> one season on there. Those, well, I'm just watching people communicate though. This is yeah. what I love about yeah, this. Yeah, it's fascinating. And you watch people communicate and you learn so much about just in general communicating. And it actually, so I can tell you, I've taken away things even in from uh, learning lessons about being a pastor, right? Oh, Especially yeah. of kids of what does it mean to return to conversations? What does it mean to, okay, like this was pretty serious. We talked about this. Are we following up? And it doesn't mean we have to follow yeah. up about yeah. the same thing, yeah. but just to be in relation and mm -hmm. how challenging it is to be in relation with people today and to, to take care of those relationships and to tend those. And I think that even came out as we kind of process things of, okay, maybe we're focusing too much on work and programs mm -hmm. and getting things done and we miss each other in that yeah. right and i'm sure i would imagine households find themselves in that place at sometimes oh, yeah. too yeah. we're so set on the vacation and the planning and the thing and the job and we need to do this and this that do we miss each other yeah. in the middle of it yeah. and at the end of the day like where does god say uh all that other stuff is more important than the relationships i'm placing in your life yeah. Right. Can't yeah. find it. Right. So that's a really cool piece that's like, I, I love the permission God gives us to slow down, to be, to wait for him, to mm -hmm. wait for the work that he's doing. Uh, but also the kind of encouragement I have, whether it be from weird Netflix shows or from this book, <laughs> to be intentional, right? Right. To, to, and, and to invite other people to be intentional too. So like to be able to say when something I, when someone says like, okay, I think we're done talking about this. Like, okay, we're done talking about this for now. Uh, if I don't hear from you in a day for a parent, or maybe it's a week for someone else, uh, then I, I'm I'm going to follow up because I care about you, you know. Yeah. And I'm just going to check in. I know I recognize you might not want to talk about this, but it doesn't mean that we're done having a relationship too, mm. right? Mm -hmm. I think that's a really cool piece. All right, so Tracy gave away that we are in May right now because <laughs> <laughs> our I wasn't supposed to. No, well, they, I don't know. They, they it's just, just funny. might not be listening in May. So that's they might not. That's well, May. they won't be listening it's in May because this May will be released us. in July, probably. In our as reality, uh, so, May is it? Wow. Pray for us. All but it's because our mind. brains are I'm all so this. Sorry. Exactly. Yeah. But all that said, we had challenges, uh, and so, like I said, we actually had four weeks to complete <laughs> our challenges, which was to take something from this and do it. And I, uh, I made this bold. I'm gonna meet my neighbors. Well, it just so happened this May, uh, I never travel <laughs> ever, and I have been out of out of town. Out of oh. town 
out of state three times in the month of May, which is a lot for me. <laughs> so three round trip plane trips between uh, time in St. Louis with the enrollment team for Concordia Seminary and two call processes and visiting those congregations that that is just excuses. <laughs> but I was so passionate about, oh, when am I going to have one of those random encounters with my neighbors? When am I going to have that opportunity? And I didn't get it. I didn't get my you random didn't opportunity. didn't have control so over I the random interaction. I failed it. And so even like, I was like, oh, I'll mow my lawn at this time because my neighbors usually get home at this time and I'll see them. Or, oh, trash day, which happens twice a week. Like, we'll go and get the trash cans at the same time. I was like praying for these moments. got binoculars at the window. I was Seriously. praying for these if moments. His neighbor, watch out. I really thought about these. <laughs> just to be able to say, yeah. hey, we haven't met yet. You know, and not Aww. just the typical. And it didn't work. Like, because we have had exchanges of, like, how you doing? Great. You know, like, that's all we've yeah. had. But I don't know their names and they don't know my names. They don't know anything mm -hmm. about me. And so I failed. But I can tell you, I'm deeply encouraged to do that. Yeah. Like, so, so I'm really ready for that. How did everybody else do with their challenges? I told Lee this morning that I, being May, now that I outed that it's May, I, um, I knew it was very unlikely that I was going to actually invite friends or, or people over to my house just purely because I'm not home very much right now and <laughs> yeah. so much going on and um, moving two kids back from college in May. You know, it was like um, I looked at the I looked at the month and thought, you know, I got to be practical here. But I have these things where just sometimes people will be on my heart. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Like I, sometimes it's first thing early in the morning. I'll I'll be like, I wonder how this person is or just wake up with them on my mind and I rarely do anything, right? Or mm. sometimes I'll shoot a text and say, hey, just think about you, how things are going. And I just decided that my way of kind of opening a door there, even though it wasn't fully like to my house, was um, that I would just pick up the phone and call, you know? So I've had good conversations with friends that God just put on my heart for one way or one, one reason or another. And, um, all the conversations have been so good and yeah. have I've left them feeling better than I've I entered them. And um, a couple of them were like, man, I really needed that today. I, I was even sharing with Melly how sometimes God puts something on your heart to share or to do or to open a door and that person really needed it. Sure, you know? Yeah. So um, and that happened twice in in the process of the month so far. And and it's funny now I'm kind of recognizing how many times God is putting people on my heart to reach out to. Yeah. Um, so maybe that's something I'll try to keep keep doing yeah. in the aftermath. That's such an encouragement, though, because I can tell you that happens to me all the time that I want to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that voice is inside my brain that's like, that no, be that'd weird. be weird. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Even think, just calling people. Is it weird people? for me to call and say, hey, I was thinking about you this morning, like right yeah. when I woke up, you know? Yeah. Is that weird? But I don't think it is. And I think we all experience that on some level. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so they, when you reach out to people, they're like, oh, man, that's funny. I was thinking about you the other day. Or that happens to me all the time, you know. That's so um, interesting. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I think it might be a good practice for me. To, to I, like I guess we need to forward. embrace the weird. I mean, that's yeah, kind of yeah. what I'm We're feeling right weird. now. We're all weird. Oh, that's so true. I know that about myself. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I have initiated oh, the okay. challenge. So awesome. I have not completed it. Tell but us we about decided it. we were going to invite families to our house and grill out and just invite people that maybe we wouldn't normally invite. That's awesome. Mm hmm Except I only have one family who's coming. <laughs> but you know what? That's okay because <laughs> okay. well, it is May. And that's part of the problem because it was right. okay, when can we do this? Right. That, yeah. Yeah, well, the date that worked for us does not work for a lot of other people. Oh, but that's gotcha. okay. That's okay. That's okay. But I did reach out to, to like, some of the families were families that, okay, we interact with all the time. But two of them are not. And so I am I have not heard back yes or okay. no. So now I have to reach out and follow up. Yes. Like Lisa said, follow yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's and awesome. see what I can do. I like the baby steps, though. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. Hey, we've initiated. We're, we're working yeah. on it. Yeah. 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 Yep. And the other thing is, as we're talking, I did meet a neighbor that we've seen in passing forever. Our neighborhood has gotten really good at inviting food trucks in. 
So like oh, that's nice. once, that's almost cool. once a week or once every other week, we have a food truck. And there I you go. That. Really good food <laughs> trucks. Amazing. So that's what we need to do. I need to get a food, food truck, truck at the end of my street. <laughs> yes. It's fantastic. And that won't be weird. When my neighbor walks out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't have a big enough neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. Well, so they like but. coming to ours. We have a big neighborhood yeah. and none of us like to cook, apparently. Oh, okay. nice. I do meet people there. That's so fun, and have though. Had that's really fun. That's a good idea. And walking back, we have a neighbor like across the street that is very active on our neighborhood Facebook page. They're out all the time. Time, we never talked to them. We right. stopped and had a conversation. Yeah, that's nice. Yay. Yay. Just, that's fun. Yeah, just okay, chatting. cool. So I was like, Good. Yay! So as you were talking, I was like, Hey, I did do that. <laughs> Go me. Love but it, it was random, it wasn't planned. It was just maybe my problem is I planned it too much. Oh, interesting. That's Should a good lesson. Plan it. Well, and that's yeah. what like I think. Like, I mean, even, I think well, I, yeah, <laughs> even as I think of my failure, I'm kind of like, I wonder who else is out there going. Like, oh, that would be me, like, yeah. wanting yeah. to. Like, but I think for me, that's where I think of ideas for myself. Like, hearing that especially, like, I mean, obviously the heat you got to watch out for, but maybe I need to walk Spartacus, you know, find the cool of the day, time to mm -hmm. do that. Um, I think of, like, just being in my front yard, which mm -hmm. yard work is a thing. I tell myself if I was married, it'd be so easy because I would, like, get – like I would probably make bread and then my wife and I could walk over to <laughs> the house and say, we made this for you. We realized we haven't met you yet. Like, cause there's this extra layer of support. Yeah. But when you're like single, you're like, oh, am I the weird neighbor? Like, you know, totally. am I the guy yep. that lives by myself that like, you can what's make he bread do? and bring and, it to my house. Anywhere. Oh, good to yeah. know. <laughs> but strangers, say. like, I wonder if they'll be like, uh, I don't know. Sorry. All right, Melanie. <laughs> okay. So yeah, the neighbor, I did two different things. One was just with neighbors. Um, I had a random opportunity because they delivered something that looked important to the wrong house. Oh, good. Um, and so instead of just like going over by myself, I was like, hey, kids, you want to walk across the street with me? And it didn't go great. Oh, no. <laughs> because like we, so I had baby on my hip. And I'm walking the two kids. We've got this envelope. And um, I think I made him nervous because like I rang the doorbell and we waited and he opened the door and he was like, what? what? Oh, hi. hi. Like <laughs> he was very yeah, confused. I was yeah. like, well, we have this piece of mail. It looked important. I wanted to, you know, bring it over. And he's like, okay, thanks. I'm like, okay. all right, bye. Hey, but that's something. <laughs> this, it, it, might was, feel it was something. Like it's something. No, that's it good because the next time it happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it won't be, be as shocker. big of a deal. Yeah. Or as right. Big. It won't be I mean, like, who's this crazy exchange? lady with all these <laughs> kids in my door? Was any exchange of names or anything? Like, no, I mean, we, we know each other's names. We've we've said hello a few times before, but I think he, like, thought it was serious because he ran with my kids. But I couldn't leave him in the house. You wanted him, like, wanted to come in. You know, oh like, yeah, oh, she's true. Yeah, like, oh. hey, hey. It was so. I think it was just a weird timing thing. But I was like, okay, well, now he knows my Seed face planted. from right. more than fifty yards away or whatever. Um, and the other thing is, my kids and I, when we stop to get the mail, there's a house near the mailbox that has lots of cats, and we love seeing the kitties. And so, um, I decided to write a note, and I was, I'm going to mail it to her because it'd be weird if I just like put it on her door. I think so. I'm actually going to put the stamp on it and put it through the mail. But I just said, like, hey, we appreciate, you know, seeing your, you know, you and your cats all the time. And we, my kids love cats. And um, if you ever need anything from somebody in the neighborhood, here's my contact information. Aww. And that way, you know, like, this is my address. This is my cell phone number. I'm so encouraged. Um, because just, you know, I, sometimes you need somebody in right? the yes. neighborhood. You really do. I know. And that's where, like, I know I have, like, Nancy up the street. I haven't seen her in about a year. You know, yeah. but, like, I know her grandson comes over to mow when grass is tall and yeah. stuff like that. But it's, like, I wonder. And that's the thing, though, is some of these people have lived in the neighborhood their whole lives, like, or a very long time. Right. So right. it's, like, they all have the connections they don't yeah. need to meet as often as the rest of us. And so that's the thing is, do I focus on the older folks? Do I go meet the newer folks? Like, sure. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's such all a— All of them. So I, I, I kind of just put the ball in her court and said, you know, like— that's a great this, idea. I'm in the neighborhood. If you ever need anything, here you go. Oh, that's um, awesome. So we'll see if anything comes to that. Because we don't always see her out and about. But at least then, you know, she's, she if she wants to act on it, she can. Um, but the other thing I did was I, I wanted to re relinquish a little bit of control <laughs> and allow for some more loud table action. Um, and so usually I get home and do all the stuff with the kids. Like, okay, we got to make sure you do your jobs and Get your homework done, and, da, 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 and then I got to make dinner. So you go find something to do. Um, but lately, I've been asking my daughter to help me cook, and she has been loving it. So that's she, awesome. She thinks, she's like, you know. That. And then we sat down to the table, and she's like, usually we say, you know, thank you, daddy, for making dinner. Thank you, mommy, for making dinner. And and so this time, she said, you have to say thank you. To <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
us. They're like, thank you, Gratitude. Majesty, for making dinner. That, that was awesome. great. And so she's real proud and she loved it. And it was just fun, yeah. you know? And I'm like, oh, can so I trust good. my, you know, my seven-year-old with a knife? Apparently, yes, I can. You know, I, this is how we do it. And this is, That's and she's so excited. Fun. So awesome. just a fun, different way um, to do something together. You know, not loading it with any biblical anything, just something that to do that she feels special. And, you know, it's it's helpful. It's something for the family. So I feel good about that. Awesome. Yeah, I, think it's I cool. love that. Very cool. I look yeah. back. At, so that's funny that you said that because I am, you know, Facebook loves to give you memories. And I'm like, we used to cook together all the time, yeah. my girls and I. But now that they're older, I don't say, hey, come help me because they're uh, doing their yeah, thing. Yeah, sure. I need to have them come help me. There you go. It's it's, because they love it. Well, my two kids have been living together um, for a year now in an apartment and managing grocery shopping Mm -hmm. and cleaning and cooking. They menu plan and they're home. And I'm like, guys, it's been three weeks. Like, do you want to cook a meal? (laughs) <laughs> you know, like I, I want them to also feel invited yeah. to do that at home, yeah. right? Because they have, they have enjoyed it. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to some of those summer meals ready for me when I get home from work. <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping, but that return I on think, investment on there. Yeah, <laughs> but I think that cooking is kind of an extension of that table. Yes, yeah, yeah. Like there's something that just kind of opens you up in that process. It's creative. It's, yep. Um, it's necessary. You know, it's one of those things that I love when I see families like doing that together. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you, you chop, I'll do this, like a, a yeah. collaborative effort with mm-hmm. meals. And I do think it gives kids a little ownership. Oh, of, yes. You know, they're fun. like, I'm going to eat this because I helped make mm-hmm. it, you know? Yes. That is an extra benefit yes. as well. I've even thought about like with my small group, which is all adults in their twenties and thirties. Like, mm-hmm. should we, like we all bring something. Mm-hmm. There's a piece of me that wonders if it would be more fun, yeah. like to make something as a group. Oh, yeah, you know? for sure. No, I would, I would if say. If you clean it as a group. Right. <laughs> Fair I enough. don't like the Even cleaning. If it's, you know, I like make the your own cooking. pizzas or something. Yes. We've done that. Yeah, we did do so that. Fun. Like, yeah. like whew, that was probably four or five years ago. That's crazy to think about. And like we yeah. used to do that. My family always had um, a New Year's Eve tamale making party. And we oh. would, everybody would bring different ingredients. Mm-hmm. And we taught ourselves. We had a friend whose grandmother taught him how to make tamales. Cool. So then he taught us how to make tamales. And, um, it, you know, we, first of all, you have such an appreciation for the people who do that because mm-hmm. you see the labor that goes into it. But also it's like so many memories on New Year's Eve of mine are like us sitting around the kitchen and, and just doing that together. You yeah. Know? So I think that yeah. those kind of things can really, the process helps make totally. it more meaningful. Yep. And I appreciate all these because it is, it is bringing home like the message of the book, which is again, God designed you this way. I, I think yeah. some, a lot of people might be listening to this, being like, "Where's, where's the how to where's read the, the Bible? Point? Where's yeah. the, where's the how to pray together? Where's the?" And and the point is to honor how God has designed you and your family, and His intentions for you and your community, and yeah. what He calls you to, and hospitality toward each other. Yeah. And so, like, to honor that makes space for Him to work. You know, mm-hmm. and that's really the takeaway to have a relationship, especially with grandparents. I mean, think of I know with me, my my grandparents, all four of them church going folks, you know, and that had an impact on me growing up Mm -hmm. and to see their faith and have the space for those conversations to happen naturally, not to force them. So, so when you just look for the opportunities to relate, God Mm -hmm. does something incredible because I I would say our world, our communities, our families are lonelier than I've ever experienced in my life. So, so there's a layer to which when you have that uh, response to loneliness and being able to relate. And if you have the excuse of being able to say to them, uh, my church's podcast or this church's <laughs> podcast, right? <laughs> right? Like, like called me to do this, you know, and it's like, right. wait, what do you mean church? Like, tell me more about that, sure. you know? Yeah. And especially some of the stuff we talked about today, that's the, a way of relaxing in God mm-hmm. and what he's done for you too. If I can call someone, I can text someone, I can do all this because what's, and who cares if I'm weird? Right. Yeah. You know, so all of this kind of gives me a whole lot of hope for as every time I know it's not the last time I'm going to read this book either. 
Um, but yeah, I've enjoyed the journey and mm -hmm. man, two books down. Can you believe it? Uh, that's exciting for us. Uh, as always, uh, feel free to ask us some questions. It'd be mm -hmm. fun for us to pull together maybe a Q&A once uh, every episode has released and, and people have submitted any questions that they have for us. Uh, you can do that by going to our Facebook page, Raise Them Up Podcast, uh, and you can see, join the conversation there. You can email us, raise them up at trinitycline.org. Uh, uh, or you could just find us, <laughs> email us, whatever you want to do. Uh, we, we're, we're here for you. And as we kind of think about next, it's kind of fun. We were having a conversation before we started about what to kind of expect from Raise Them Up in the future. And so we're looking at uh, basically reading a book uh, three times a year. So so these first two seasons, we've released them pretty close together. Mm -hmm. um, but follow us on the Facebook uh, for some announcements on when things will be coming. Uh, and we'll have a fall book, which will be three big questions. So we're returning to a Fuller Youth Institute book there, uh, which is the three big questions that teenagers are asking themselves. So uh, who am I? What's my purpose? Where do I belong? Those are the three biggest questions. Again, an organization that did a lot of research uh, and really explored it has turned it into some practical practical steps of how do we walk alongside of young people and get and to I do that. I think not only young people are asking themselves that question. Right. Good, good, good point. point. So Absolutely I think, I think there are lots of us that are adults and maybe on the more mature side <laughs> Well, and that ask ourselves kids. those questions. Yeah. Those, are, yeah. those are people questions, oh, not just no youth doubt. questions. Yes. They're people questions. Yeah, I, I love absolutely it. think those good. are questions that apply to. But big questions that, especially as you think of raising up oh, yeah. the next generation, For sure. like being able to help them. Navigate. process those conversations and yeah. what that means of who are you like truly who are you because this world can be very confusing when it comes to identity <laughs> mm -hmm. uh what is your purpose you know and um where do, where do I fit in? Where do I belong? So that'll be fun for us to be able to process. We'll release that in uh, the fall that when you're listening to this is coming up. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll, we'll have another book for us in the spring. And then we'll have our summer reading too. So that'll be kind of the pattern that we follow. Uh, fall, spring, and summer. And so you can kind of expect that from us with a little break in between each season. I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, yeah. the conversation. I hope our, our listeners have enjoyed the conversation. Reading along, if you so choose to do. Obviously, we all value this book and love this book. Uh, it's been a joy to have you along and to be able to hear from you, and whether that's in personal conversations or engaging with us in the different places. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to seeing you next season with three big questions. Thank you.